Today I'm going to talk about vulvar disease, in particular vulvar cancer. But before I talk about vulvar cancer, one of the critical things to know about vulvar disease is it's one of the most perhaps misunderstood diseases of the lower genital tract because so often people think that they see something that they recognize what it is when in fact they don't know what it is at all. And so oftentimes they will go without biopsying things that may end up being malignancies. So I want to just give a quick brief overview of the things that uh, one could see on the uh, vulvar skin that might be confusing with a vulvar cancer. Um, we think about infectious problems that people can see. We can see issues of um, condyloma, which is the human papillomavirus in which they get warty changes. You can get issues related to um, chancroid, which is an uh, obviously sexually transmitted disease. One can get a chancre, which is related to syphilis, also a sexually transmitted disease. Um, other things, maybe molluscum contagiosum, which is a, a small warty growth with almost looks like a mushroom. Um, and these are very benign, uh, related to the pox virus. Um, another one that's not very commonly seen, but can be related to cancers, is Paget's disease. And Paget's disease is, a, uh, as classically described, is a icing cake appearance, which is red and almost white, very subtle margins, and very flat, so it's not raised up like many of these others, because the chancre I talked about is a painless ulcer, the chancroid is, a, is an ulcer, but it's painful, condyloma is raised up from the skin, so many of these are raised up from the skin, but Paget's disease um, is not raised up at all. Then there's another, and, and that's, there's a other list of condyloma lata, which is secondary syphilis that one can see. You can see a primary herpes outbreak um, from uh, uh, the herpes simplex virus. Primary outbreaks generally will cause uh, ulcers on both sides of the vulva, as well as uh, some inguinal adenopathy given the first infection. Recurrence is usually on a single side related to the dermatome. Um, and usually does not cause near the inflammation. Then we get to the uh, what we call the vulvar dystrophies, in which you can get what's called lichen sclerosis. And lichen sclerosis is a very whitey uh, appearance to the vulva. It's, it's very thin skin. The skin tends to break down. What these women will kind of classically all complain of, of course, is severe itching with breakdown of the skin. And what we have to do as clinicians is to control that itching process because it can be, in a certain sense, a precursor to cancers. Women can also get squamous cell hyperplasia, which uh, in many ways can look similar to lichen sclerosis in that it's very white skin, uh, but tends to be more raised up off the skin and thicker, but also causes that same itching sensation that women get. So then we fall into the vulvar uh, precancerous changes, or vulvar dysplasias, and the vulvar dysplasias are graded uh, just like they are in cervical disease. You can have, uh, as we, vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia, or VIN, and they're graded 1 to 3. Um, and VIN1s uh, are generally very flat. You can hardly see them unless you put acetic acid on the vulva. VIN3s tend to be elevated up off the skin and have a much angrier look, a dark appearance, and so on. Um, and we generally treat those either with excision or with laser. Most of these are related to the human papillomavirus. Then we get into vulvar cancers. Uh, the most common variety that we see is squamous cell carcinoma. It makes up the vast, of the vast majority of all cancers of the vulva, um, probably over 85 to 90 percent of the vulvar cancers. They are raised they can be very small to very large, um, and their spread patterns are such that they go into the inguinal nodes as the, uh, as the areas arrive from the urogenital diaphragm, and therefore the nodes for that area would be the inguinal area. 
Uh, it's a surgically staged cancer, meaning that we take it off surgically in a signed stage based upon taking off both the area of the cancer. So if, so if here's the vulva, say the cancer were here, then what we would do is we would take off about a two centimeter wide deep area of the excision. And if it's a unilateral lesion, then we would just come into that groin area on that side and take out what we call the ipsilateral nodes. If this lesion, though, is more midline like this, then we would take out bilateral nodes of both the groin areas um, for the vulvar cancer. Uh, second most common cancer, interestingly, is, believe it or not, melanoma. Um, very dark pigmented areas um, and can be highly aggressive. We also take nodes out in that situation. Uh, melanomas, you would think, are, don't normally come in places where there's not uh, sun exposure, but yet one needs to be cognizant of the fact that it's the second most common cancer that we see in the vulvar area. Uh, following that, you can get underlying adenocarcinomas or glandular cancers. Pretty unusual in this area of the human body. Um, but we can see adenocarcinoma is related, as I already mentioned, about Paget's disease. About 15% of those patients have underlying Paget's disease. Believe it or not, you can actually get breast cancers here because this area of the body is at the end of the mammary line, and so women can get rare breast cancers. We've had several of those here. You can also get standard uh, adenocarcinomas from the, just the glands uh, that are on the vulvar area. There are other types of cancers that we can see. We can see sarcomas, sarcomas which are classically not found in this area of the body. We tend to find them more commonly in, in uh, the uterus and the human genital tract, although you get soft tissue sarcomas all over the human body. Um, but we do see them on the vulvar area. They oftentimes tend to be lower grade and not highly aggressive, uh, though they can be um, higher grade in rare cases. There, uh, we have seen a few patients that have had lymphomas in this area before. I have a patient I'm presently treating for lymphoma um, of that area. And then, of course, you can simply get metastatic disease. In other words, this is a site where you, a cancer can spread to. Um, so the point is, is as you see all these different uh, things I brought up, you begin to realize that so often it's hard to tell what things are on the vulva. And one of the uh, problems in which uh, in vulvar disease is people do not tend to biopsy. They take a look and say, oh, I know what that is, and then they leave it alone. But if you don't remember anything else about this lecture, if you flat don't know what it is, the patient deserves a biopsy. Because I've had numerous cases in which women develop vulvar cancers. The cancers grew quite large because nobody would ever get a biopsy of these areas. And that gives you a quick oversight. It would probably be well for you to go back and review the pictures in the textbook of all the inflammatory, infectious, and cancerous changes that one can see of the uh, vulvar um, tract.